Bang! Neves Knives. I'm Jared, and I have a very exciting unboxing right here. Looks like they gave me a $100 voucher, but that's not what this is about. I spent a lot of money, guys. I spent a lot of money. I seen this knife, and I had to get it. This is a Jaren Moen tooling. I got it from Knife Center. And here we go. So I've tried one other Jerry Moen knife. And it was amazing. Absolutely amazing. But it was a, a custom. This one is made by Riat. And I'm super excited. This thing was not cheap at all. I spent a lot of money. More than I normally ever spend on a knife. Oh, this thing is beautiful. We'll talk more about everything. Let's get a flip going. First off, reverse flick. Ooh, 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 ooh. it's so cold right now. It's cold outside. Very easy to reverse flick. The hole lands in a good spot. Not for the thumb, though. I mean, you can slow roll it, but really good for the reverse flick. Let's try the top flipper. Hoo-hoo, that top flipper is really easy. Holy cow. Because of the positioning and the jimping, this is super easy. Now, like I said, this thing is very cold. Um, so, ooh, ooh, they put a nice edge on this. Look at that plunge grind, beautiful plunge grind. Not as thin as I would like, but still thin behind the edge. Very nice. We got um, uh, a very pokey yet robust tip. So it's a tip that's going to be really good for utility cuts. But you're not going to have to worry about it being fragile because you see the swedge on top. They reinforced it. We have a beautiful ramp. No jimping. Jimping back here, but that don't count. Ergos. Really nice. Oh, man. This thing is nice. Very slim. But long, and then I always talk about this, how having a knife slim here and thicker back here always makes, in my opinion, for good ergos. And in this case, it does. Now, I'm not a big fan of these clips. Hopefully, the uh, let me just try it right here. Yeah, it works okay, but I'm just not a big fan of them. I'm not a big fan of those clips, and you guys are probably like, why would you spend that much on a knife that has something on it that you don't like? Well, everything else just looked amazing. This jimping's really nice for if you're holding it right here. Man, that I, I know I'm in a honeymoon phase, and it's my knife. I spent a bunch of money for it, but can you? Yeah, it's just too low. Ooh, ooh, it needs some oil. It needs some oil. Let me drip some oil on it. I can tell the detent ball is dry. So we're just going to put a little drippity, drippity on the schmitty. Come on, work it in. There we go. A little tiny, tiny bit more. Oh, see that micarta. Oh, that micarta is so nice. There we go. Now we're talking. Ooh, sorry guys, I gotta close the cab. Watch this thing now. Oh yeah, very very smooth. Let's see where that detent lies. I'm trying to put the cap on this. Okay, the detent is. Nice and early, considering it doesn't have a flipper tab, so you will be past it. Very easy to flip. The access to the lock bar. They didn't give you a cutout, and I kind of knew that when I got it. And I know that's my thing. Like, I really like good access to the lock bar. Very easy with the left hand, by the way. But I tried another Jerry Moen, and it was basically the same way. The only difference was is it had um, jimping right here, and it worked great. And in this case, it's kind of the same way, just without the jimping. Um, it's pretty easy, even though it doesn't have a cutout, which is kind of weird. You wouldn't think it'd be easy, but... 
and they didn't even put a chamfer or anything. And you would think this is Riyadh, as much money. Why didn't they put a chamfer there? This is how Jerry Moen does his knives. And like I said, it's it's very easy. And I'm not like trying to be biased or anything like that. I totally would tell you guys if it was difficult. It's very easy to disengage. So um, let's do this thing left-handed. Very easy. Yeah, everything seems to be pretty easy right or left-handed. Now, the the other knife I tried, I think, was called the Mongoose. And, oh, yeah, the lock bar had this kind of jimping on it on the Mongoose, if I remember correctly. But that was a custom. Awesome micarta. I love this micarta. Here's one that I haven't touched with oil yet. Nice big hardware all the way around. Full titanium, titanium um, lock bar insert. Lock up. Very solid. Nice. I'm happy with it. I am happy with it. This is something I'm really excited about. I did I do wish this was a hollow grind. I'll say that. It's not, but it's still slicey. Um, cause they didn't go with a crazy thick blade stock and it does get down to a decent edge. I love that blade shape. The blade shape is amazing. This is going to work so good. Like this grip right here, putting the two fingers underneath this part, just goes right up into your palm, right up in your palm. So then now if you put your finger on the tip right there, you have so much like just control. I really like that. I like having that amount of control. So like I'm opening up a box, right? Go right from the side, right to the top. If I need to peel the other side, it's just really easy. I really like that level of control. The detent, I do kind of wish, maybe not. Yeah, I don't know. Um, this is just an unboxing, but I was going to say, I do kind of wish it was a little bit stronger on the reverse flick, but it's so, it's not bad at all. Like I can totally fail it, but I don't know any knife that I can't fail really with the reverse flick. I mean, there are some that have such strong reverse flicking action. So I guess I can't say that there are some that are very hard to fail if you're doing it right. I'm just trying to break the detent, but it's very easy because when you're holding it, your finger just kind of naturally lands right there. So let's see if we can do the, the um, reach around. No, this one's not going to be that kind. No, because it doesn't, because it sits behind this. So you can't really, you can do this one very easily, but you can't go like this. Maybe after I get used, no, I don't think so. This one's easy though. I do like from flippers that are easy to use because I'll be honest, I'm not a huge from flipper fan. I mean, I like from flippers that are easy, but if they're not easy, I don't even, you know, like use it. I'll just use the other deployment. If they have another deployment, if it's only, if it's only a from flipper, it better be good because <laughs> Like that, that new uh, Migron knife, that is a great example of one that I could handle it just being a front flipper because it's so easy. But most knives, if they're not incredibly easy, then you better give me more deployments because I, I just, it drives me nuts having a front flipper that's not super easy. This one is like very, very easy. They've been getting some good front flippers lately, like... Somebody asked me about, because of the Migaron knife, because I said it was like the easiest one I've ever tried. And they said, well, what about the Whipper Snapper? What about the Olamic Whipper Snapper? Both of them are equally as easy. Just the Whipper Snapper is different. The, you know, the kind of like this one. All three of them are just a little bit different. The way their front flipper is shaped, where it's positioned, kind of like this knife too. The Kaiser Dialorme. This one, super easy to use. This is like... One of the most easiest front flippers as well, but it's also a regular flipper. So the position of it and the way you do it is just completely different. Like with this one, I don't go like that. I put it on top and then I pull straight down like, like that. Um, this one, you put it on the front. You know, it's not like I do it on top and go like that. I put it on the front 
and then I snap it over. Now, the whippersnapper, you go all the way in the front and you snap downward. It's kind of like this one, except for the whippersnapper's taller. It's just a different shape. Like, it's kind of like a mohawk. This one's like a front mohawk. The whippersnapper's like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm going through mohawks now. Oh, you can tell I'm kind of excited. I think I could get this thing down for the thumb flick, but it's just you got to put your finger so far down. It's good for the roll, but I can do it, but it's just not satisfying. But the reverse flick is very satisfying. Now, is it worth the 375 or 350 I paid? <laughs> Cares and it kill me. Um, oh, let's talk about the RWL 34 because we're talking about is it worth it? I don't even want to hear this. And you guys probably already left the comment. You guys probably already left it. Maybe I should rip this out and put it in the beginning. I won't because then you guys will get to see the knife before me. Um, <laughs> that didn't make any sense. Um, RWL 34 for this price. Is that too much for this? For RWL 34? Listen, guys, you, you can't. You got to stop that. Now, I agree that there are some steals that it's like, that's just too much money for that. Yes, I agree. But you can't go through life <clears throat> determining the steal that should be on the knife based on the price. Because you're, okay, so like one, right? I hear people arguing with another company saying because their price is so high, they shouldn't be using s 35 yen they should be using 20 cv or m390 but that same company has never used m390 or 20 cv so they're probably not good at it so it would probably wind up horrible the heat treat would probably be horrible on it they would have burnt edges and you'd probably get better edge retention if you had their s35 so that's one argument now another argument there are so many different kinds of steels for different reasons. Some steels are tougher. So like, say, a hard-use knife, right? You'd be like, oh, um, it's this price. It should be this steel, even though that steel is not a hard-use steel. That steel is chippy or not chippy, but you know what I mean. Like, it's, it's, not a, it's a hard steel. It's a fragile steel. It's not for hard use. That steel is for maximum edge retention, right? There, there's just so many different variables you can put on steel. You cannot say that... This price category means it should be this steel. That's not the way it should go. RWL 34 is similar to like 154 CM. Let's look at it like that. It's made, Damas Steel's made out of it. And there are $1,000, Grimsmo, Grimsmo Norseman uses RWL 34. They use, just like Damas Steel. Damas Steel, RWL 34 is made out of Damas Steel and a couple other steels. The point is, is that... RWL34 is a great steel. It takes a very sharp edge. That's one thing. It takes a very keen edge. It has good edge retention. Edge retention very similar to like 154CM. Um, it has great stain resistance. It's easy for the companies to grind without burning. It's easier for them to grind. And that's why the Jerry Moen uses RWL34 on all his knives. Well, at least from what I know of, that's what he uses. Damas steel or RWL34. And he does that because they're easy, easy for him to grind. So he can get the heat treat really good and grind them very easily to where you get the best performance for that steel. He can do a good job with it. So... Now, I understand this is not a custom. This is a production knife, and Riet does all different types of steels. They do do a pretty good job with M390. Now, I'm not saying that M390 wouldn't be good on this, but I don't mind this being RWL34. This knife is not going to be a... Um, a knife I actually need maximum edge retention out of or certain things like this. I can get a nasty sharp edge with, with RWL34 very quickly, very easily. It'll strop really nicely. I'll be able to keep a nice keen edge on it. And to be honest, the way that this type of knife use is, I don't think I'd be able to tell really the difference, in, meaning in edge retention. Um, now, the ease of sharpening I'll be able to tell and the ease of maintenance I'll be able to tell. Now, so that only benefits me, right? That, that's just beneficial to me.
Now, I don't have a problem sharpening any steel, really. So, of course, I would have loved to have seen certain steels on this, but I'm not upset at RWL34. That is a, a very good steel for EDC. And, like I said, and a lot of custom makers use it. I think I'm, I'm starting to like this detent more and more the longer I'm sitting here flicking it. But, um... But yeah, that just that argument just goes out the window when you start putting variables in there. Um, like even the ergos and the type of cutting that a knife you know uses, you know certain steels will benefit it more. You know, just depending. Um, so there's just so many different things you can you know. Like I said, that I, there are some steels that I agree. Like HCR does not belong on any knife above a certain price point. I agree. And because there's steels that fit that category that are more superior that are also a very affordable and basically do everything that steel will do but better, right, for that same price. Now, this steel, you know, is a steel that gets for the ease of sharpening, ease of grinding, ease of maintenance, ease of all that, it gets really good performance. So you're getting maximum performance with ease of everything else. Other steels, you might get maximum edge retention, maximum everything, but it's more difficult to grind, more difficult to heat treat, more difficult, all these little things. So, um, and it, I know it's on the company to bring that to you for, you know, good, and at this price, you would kind of expect them to just naturally put a more superior steel. But when we say superior, once you get past, in my opinion, mid-grade steels or to mid-grade, once you get to mid-grade to super steels, superior in what end is what I always like to think of it. Because like Maximet, right, will be superior to, say, S30V in edge retention. Right? Or let's say S35. S35 and Maximet. Maximet will be superior in edge retention, but S35 will be superior in toughness. Maximet will be superior in um, probably a, a sharper polished edge, right? But, but S35 will have a superior, longer lasting fine edge, right? And uh, Maximet might get microchipping while S35 will uh, have better corrosion resistance, right? Like, the, so you got to pick your battles. And um, RWL34 is a very, very well rounded steel that's really good. It's really good for EDC, it's really good for, for somebody who wants ease of maintenance with getting the most out of a steel. Good corrosion, good toughness good sharpness, good edge retention, you know, good everything, and you get the ease of maintenance. So there you guys go. Um, let me know what you guys think about this knife down in the description. I'd love to hear you guys' opinion. I love you guys. Peace.